All right, hey everybody. Thanks for tuning in. I'm Frank, this is Jackson. Hello. Hey everyone, this is our new podcast set. This is the, the Fast Cat logo. We're, uh, we're live on Facebook. Um, we're gonna be talking about how to uh, sequence our plans, how to use our plans together um, to plan out your, your training. And so uh, we haven't started our podcast live yet, but we will in a moment. And I just want to take this moment to you know, let everyone join and and, and we yeah. should also mention we're filming we're, we're we're improving our setup we're 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 getting how do you explain it just a little bit more professional we're gonna, we're we're fully filming it so we yeah. have a camera you can't see it obviously mm -hmm. it's right in front of us we're gonna film this and put the whole video version on YouTube in addition to the normal audio podcast just to make it um, just have you know some people like to to watch us talk instead yes. of listen so. You can do both. It'll be up on YouTube soon after this is uh, posted. Um, so we'll just we have a lot more places that that will be. We're uh, waiting to hear back from Spotify, getting the podcast up on Spotify. Oh yeah, um, nice. Hopefully that comes through soon. So yeah, just t getting twenty nineteen started right. You know. Yeah, if this uh, podcast were Spinal Tap, we're taking it to eleven. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> we're trying to. Uh, yeah, so this is our set. Basically, this is our logo. Uh, for all of you uh, that don't know, this is a real disc wheel. Uh, this is a head disc wheel. Um, it hung on front of the Fast Cat Performance Center for five years while we had a retail space. And the backstory of this real disc wheel is that this is the wheel that Tom Zerbel piloted to fourth place in the World Championships. Yeah, fourth, fourth, fourth. In the world. In the world. Wow. And then on the way back home, um, hit, the wheel cracked in the bike box as it, what happens. Of course. European travel. And um, uh, Ian Stanford, um, who w works at uh, Head, who is the liaison that got Tom on the, the wheels, who's also a fast cat athlete, um, we were talking about Tom, and I was like, well, can I have that wheel? We can, uh, we'll use it as a logo. And... I got um, a local graphics design company to um, make the logo. Our logo for a long time has been the disc wheel with the cheetah on top. And so we got a real disc wheel uh, from Tom Zerbel's fourth place world champs. And that's cool. Here we are today. Um, yeah. Cool. So I think everyone's joining. Uh, Coach Isaiah is in the house. He is moderating the Facebook group. If you guys have any questions about how to sequence and pair our training plans together, Post in the uh, the comments, and Coach Isaiah will um, be able to answer them while we're talking. We'll uh, of course um, be monitoring that and can speak um, audibly live to to some of your questions. So uh, yeah, go ahead and, and ask away. The, the, and, and I think with that said, we're probably ready to get started. Yeah, I'm ready. Are okay. You ready? Yeah, I'm ready. And action. Welcome to the Fast Cat Podcast. I'm your host, Frank Overton. Some call me the Big Cat, and I'm joined with Jackson Long. Hello, hello, hello. We have like 3,000 different cameras. We've got a full live audience. We're triple out dipping there. today. <laughs> we're triple dipping. We got fa Facebook Live, we got the podcast, and uh, we're videoing the podcast that's going uh, up on YouTube yep. later on. Yep, so we're going to have basically from here on out all of the podcasts uh, recorded you know, video wise to make it just a little bit more professional Yeah. and kind of, you know, some people like watching the podcast, like watching us talk, us mm -hmm. discuss, especially, I think it'll be cool once we have more guests on and stuff like that. Just improve it, you know, add, yeah. add different forms of media. It's, it's all good. Yeah. Just spreading our content around exactly. uh, podcast, Facebook live, YouTube. Yeah. Yeah. So welcome everyone. To, uh, what are we talking about today? Talking about training plans and, yeah. you know, sequencing them. I think how to pair the, the training plans, you know, I think there's a lot of questions. I'm sure you get more than anyone um, about mm -hmm. how do I, how do I structure my entire season with, with all these different training plans that are available? What if I have my, this unique situation that, mm -hmm. that, you know, makes me, I'm doing weights later. Or I have this certain race that's at a different time. Um, so there's just a lot I think to talk about here and it's, a, you know, honestly a question that I have. I don't, I don't know too much about this stuff and we'll, so we'll get we'll, into that. We'll talk about what training yeah. plan you should do next. Mm. 
Th this is a user-inspired uh, episode. Yeah. Um, it is a question I do get frequently uh, via email, um, on the phone, and in our private Facebook group. But everyone wants to know what training plan they uh, should do next. So being user-inspired, I thought we would talk to that. I also thought for the, just in, as to the cycling training community, endurance community as a whole, we'll talk about phases of, of your training. Uh, what phases you should be doing and when. For uh, I'm of the opinion that the right training is all about timing. What yeah. you're doing, when. It's the timing of when you're doing it in relation to your goal event, when you want to be in peak form, when right. that A race is, when that time frame is for um, when you want to be your fastest. And so with that said, um, uh, for the longest time, for my whole entire coaching career, I've always gone by you lift weights, and then when you get done lifting weights, you build your base, and then when you get through building your base, you do intervals, yeah. and then you're ready to race. Um, and that's kind of the way our training plans are designed. Um, there's some permutations on that. You can do intervals, and then you can move on to a race-specific plan, and then you get a lot of good intensity. Yeah. Um, but by and large, you know, weights, then do sweet spot base, then do intervals, um, choose the type of intervals that are specific to like, like what kind of uh, racing you're doing. Like we have road racing, criteriums, time trials, hill climbs. You'll do the gravel, the gravel plan. Yeah. That is, that's intervals for gravel. A lot of long sustained climbing that most of the gravel races have. A lot of simulation long, rides. Yeah, the gravel simulation ride on Saturdays. Um, and, and, and then you're then you're ready to go. But everyone wants to know where do I jump in? Um, and so that, that that's what we'll probably go over. It seems like because everything is the timing, and then everyone's timing is different. There's about forty five bazillion permutations. Yeah, exactly. So, so it's going to be hard to cover everything. But I think yeah. hopefully what we can do is kind of give you the tools that you need to kind of figure out how to do those permutations themselves, you know, uh, yourselves. But That's first, right. I think we should, we have a couple little housekeeping things. We should always, we should mention, um, use code 25 podcast, That's right. save, what is it? 25% off, mm -hmm. um, on all of the plans. So for the podcast listeners, this helps, you know, um, it's, it's, it's timely and, and relevant to the conversation we're going to have today. Mm -hmm. Um, so if you're in the market for a training plan, this stuff makes sense to you, put in that code at checkout 25 podcast, save a little bit of cash. Also, next week, Thursday the 24th, at this time, um, what is it, 11 a.m. Mountain Standard Time, we'll be doing yep. our first official Q&A podcast. That's right. So we're going to do those every month, and that's fielding questions from you, the podcast audience. So yeah. um, send us an email to help at fastcatcoaching.com, mm -hmm. or tag us on social media, hashtag I'm a fast cat. <laughs> um, or just, yeah, shoot us a message, leave a question. We'll, we'll have it on live on, on Facebook. So we'll get those questions as well, but yeah, just giving you the heads up to prepare for that. If you do have questions, start thinking about it, um, throughout this next week. Yeah. So we're going to go three weeks on one week off. That's our plan for 2019, mm -hmm. three, three weeks of topics. And then we're going to pause every fourth week to take a, do a full on Q and a yeah. episode. And so. Um, if you guys are listening to this post live today and you have questions, like again, um, tag us, send us an email, and we'll um, choose like the best questions for our hour long episode next week. Cool. And then the week after that, uh, we are going to be talking about the Oat Route. Oh. Um, Colby Pierce, uh, friend and fellow coach, uh, colleague, is going to join us. And uh, we both did Oat Route San Francisco and Oat Route Rockies last year. So uh, we're going to just talk about it, share our experiences, uh, you know, kind of um, share what the Oot Route is is all about and, uh, you know, we'll talk training, of course, uh, cool. for the Oot Route, and, but that'll be a good one. Um, yeah, I'm excited for that. Are you, are, are you coming to the Oot Route Asheville with me? Uh, let's throw it down. Let's do it. Okay. I'm down. That'd be awesome. I mean, I, well, yeah, you guys will have to convince me what this Oot Route thing is all about and if it's, why I should do it. Okay. So well, well I think you should do it. It's okay. super fun. Let's do it. So with that said, let's get into how to how to pair your plans. Yep. And let's use you as an example. I think I'm a I think I'm a great example because like there's a <laughs> I have a yeah a weird season. I okay. Have, I think. But you've so. been lifting weights. I've been lifting weights. I'm right. sore right now. I actually okay. went yesterday, but yeah. definitely ready to ease back into the bike. Um, okay. So you're um, ready for your base. Ready for base. Okay. 
And then um, here's, here's how I figure out this question. What plan should Jackson do? So Oat Route Asheville is May 17th, I think, 18th, yeah. something like that. And that'll probably be my first yeah. event if, if I first do that. First event. Yeah. So now we're mid-January. You got uh, February, March, April, May. You got four months. That's like 20 weeks. So 20 weeks, what plans should he do? How to, how to divvy that up? I would say, so if you do 18 weeks of sweet spot, which is our signature sweet spot plan that has uh, four good builds of, of sweet spot in there, what I would do instead of that, if you do 18 weeks of sweet spot, you're not gonna have done any interval work prior to the, the O route Asheville. And this is another question. The, the question is, well, the Asheville may be my B race, yeah and my a race is really after that so yeah or do i need to go into that in race mode you know this is the custom yeah the cut this is the podcast for it so here's so say let's take let's use two examples uh let's first example Asheville is a b race okay. You're, you don't want to peak for it yeah so in that case drive your ctl up as high as you can with the 18 weeks of sweet spot plan that also would be if you want to buy those plans individually. Sweet spot one, sweet spot two, sweet spot three. Times six weeks, that's 18 weeks, okay. equals 18 weeks. So then that has two weeks prior to Asheville. And then what I would say is you're going to buy the probably do hill climbing after that. Is so, Asheville pretty hilly? Yes. Okay. All the route routes are. Awesome. There's no such thing as a flat oat route. Okay. The, uh, Asheville will have climbs don't quote me on this but in around 12 to 16 minutes okay. and then there's a final day uphill time trial mm -hmm. so you want to concentrate on your base primarily do like a rest week leading into Asheville um, and you may want to you know throw in a hill climbing interval yeah um, from our intervals plan but then what you want to do after uh, the uh, O route Asheville is then you want to look at what what else do I have? You know, yeah. I know you're not doing the crusher, so you're probably looking towards steamboat. So, maybe. well, this is oh, see the. Well, I'm thinking about this new Oregon Trail gravel race, uh, gravel yeah. grinder five day stage. Someone race. sent us in information about that. Yeah, so yeah. I know, like my friend Matt Lieto, who I met at Rebecca's last year, is like part of the organizing team, and if you signed up for Rebecca's, which I did. Um, you get $150 off of the Oregon Trail thing because they're the same promoters. It's still like, it's $900 for the entry fee because it's like Damn. all food included. Okay. It's camping. They haul all your stuff around. Still a lot of money. It's a big pill for me to, sw to swallow. Yeah. When um, is it? End of June. So it's like the last week of June. Mm -hmm. um, so it's like my kind of tentative schedule, Hot Route Now, Oregon Trail, although I haven't signed up because I just... It's a lot of money. Yeah. Then um, a bit of a break. Steamboat yeah. Rebecca's. Steamboat Rebecca. Okay. Okay. So after after Urad Asheville, you want to choose a plan specific for what you're doing. Um, this the stage race. We do have a stage race intervals plan, but yeah. that's that's kind of hardcore. That's for like a Valley of the Sun, the Gila, you know, Cascade. I would. That's not. You just want to do probably a gravel plan to yeah. be honest. And then after you get done with that and take a little break, you may want to do like a hill climb interval plan for, for Steamboat because you've already done the yeah. gravel. So I should start with something now that like the weights are kind of going down. Mm -hmm. Like I don't want to start necessarily on the gravel plan right now. I would go into the sweet spot. Sweet spot. Yeah. Work on your base. Okay. Before, this is another question we'll answer. Don't go straight into an interval plan without having done any sweet spot or any base. Yeah. You want to make sure you've done base before you do intervals. Unless you're slacking off and your email is six weeks prior to your event, yeah, like yeah. what plan for your should I do? Then you're in a, I call it crisis mode. You're cramming. These are like college exams. Yeah. Then you, you there's one thing you know you need to do, and that's do some intervals. Yeah. Like you're gonna perform the best having getting into an interval plan. Mm -hmm. So, but I don't recommend that. I'll take back out, work backwards from the date of your race, and. Um, build your base as high as you can with sweet spot and then allow six weeks to get into like yeah. an interval plan okay. and that would be the second example like if you said frank Asheville is my a number one race i would say do 12 weeks of sweet spot sweet spots two and three drive your ctl up 
but then do hill climbing intervals um, for for that. That's 18 weeks, and then you'd actually have two weeks to taper, and that's 20 weeks. That's right on the money. Okay. And, but because your goal for the O route is not to peak, yeah. you're going to take a, a slightly different approach, and that's the benefit of these um, putting these plans together. Is right. You can kind of custom tailor and you can work a, a race or event like o route into that plan as a training that's race, right right because yeah. that's kind of what i would see the yeah the o route as i mean my a race is steamboat right and so it's like i have a lot of time for that it's mm-hmm. you know mid end of august mm-hmm. which will then hopefully lead me into rebecca's but uh so yeah i think it's you have to i think a big part of this is is figuring out and it's like why we talked we podcast about this months ago writing your events down, deciding which ones are your A, B, C mm-hmm. races, mm-hmm. and figuring, kind of working backwards from there and, and saying, look, okay, you know, I have these races coming up, which, how do I work backwards from the main A race? Right. What, what plan am I going to go for? How am I going to structure that? Because, yeah, you don't want to just like throw down, you know, a huge race specific plan early mm-hmm. in the season and then, mm-hmm. you know. Then you're like, what do I do, for, yeah. do next? I mean, take... This is the, I hate to mention this name, but this is the Lance Armstrong plan. One yeah. peak, one goal, yeah. laser light focus. Yeah. focus. Same thing Frumi's kind of done, except in past years that he did the Giro. But like if you have one goal like of Steamboat, just, just yeah. sweet spot all the way up, then do six weeks of intervals leading into a sweet spot with like our gravel plan or hill climbing mm-hmm. intervals. And um, just peak for, for Steamboat. And the question that we get a lot from cyclocrossers is, well, I want to do some crit in mountain bike racing. And my, the answer is, do you want to have a great cyclocross season or do you want to have a good cyclocross yeah. season? The athletes that have great cyclocross seasons do do weights in the spring and summer. I'm sorry, weights in the spring, base in the summer, intervals in the, in the fall. Um, the athletes that have mediocre cyclocross seasons tend to race crits and mountain bike races and are a little bit crispy, they don't have a good enough base to sustain them all the way through the season. So yeah. um, I think Jonathan Day is asking when to transition across and, and that kind of answers your question. You know, if you want to um, do a great cross season, just focus primarily on that, no crit or crit racing until, you know, you need to be lifting weights and, and all that. I think that's why we have that 24 week off season cyclocross plan which is what most cyclocrossers want to be starting in a january early february so then my next question is if what's you know for someone like me who you know is working two jobs and finishing my <laughs> my master's yeah, thesis yeah. and like still wants to do some running and some like you know ma- maintenance of strength training stuff mm-hmm. i don't have a ton of time to do long hard rides i also work on the weekends and, mm-hmm. and as well mm-hmm. and so I think that's relatable to probably a lot of our listeners that have families mm-hmm. or, you know, full-time jobs that it's like, so what, what, how can you kind of customize your own plans to really work with your own schedule, mm-hmm. but still keep that consistency rolling so that you don't like kind of burn the candle at both ends and overstress yourself and overextend mm-hmm. your training. Okay. Uh, I and mean, that's a whole nother podcast in and of right, itself. Right. That is a whole nother podcast in and of itself. But, um, where to begin on that one. Um, first of all, I'm just going to say to everyone out there, there is no running and cycling. Jackson yeah. is an anomaly. Yeah. I and just can't uh, help he, it. I'm sorry. he just, <laughs> just can't, can't accept it. So if you want to yeah. be a cyclist, you want to be the best you can be, there is yeah. no running. Spend your time on the bike. Your time is best spent on the bike. The other thing I think what you're talking about is um, just this is real world training. You, we get this question all the time should I be advanced? Should I buy the advanced plan? And it's like, well, how old are you? Do you work a full-time yeah. job? And the answer is always, well, I'm over 40, and yes, I work a full-time job. Oh, and by the way, I have kids and a wife and a marriage, and, yeah. and life is good. You don't need to train more than 8 to 12 hours. Choose yeah. the intermediate. That is a master's base plan. Um, but we get type A's all the time. Should I be advanced? And yeah. here's what you can do. And this relates to your question. Do the intermediate plans... And then if you have time, like if you're a school teacher and you get off um, out of school in June, into May, do the intermediate plans. And then when you're off or when you want to really take it up to the next level to get ready for steamboat, then move on and do more hours. Do the advance. Um, 
and so you're you're not going to be doing five hour rides on in March, right? And and but you're saving those for July. Yeah. So as you consider your plans, you don't need to jump into the gravel plan in in, in yeah, uh, exactly. April. Save that for the summer and, and do that for six though. weeks just prior to your event. Yeah, because I mean, like mm. like you said, I'm an anomaly. I have a weird philosophy with my exercise, and I'm not trying to uh, be a high level cyclist anymore. But I still want to like be strong and feel good. Um, and so it's like, but I also want to do like a bike packing trip this summer. So I'll like build that into the plan of like, okay, mm. this is going to be like an extended base thing, you know? Yeah. Um, that's more a sweet spot, sweet spot base, you yeah. know? And like, and, and so, but, and then once it's kind of coming up to that, like summer, you know, mid to late summer when I have more time, when the weather is more consistent and nice, then it's like, okay, mm -hmm. now I can put the nose to the grindstone mm -hmm. and really focus on that gravel specific plan of doing those longer, harder rides and, and not be, you know, not think too far ahead, like at this time of year and get stressed out about, right. okay, I need to be like, so, you know, you're, you dialing. just come off your weight program. Yeah. So now you really have 16, 18 weeks of base coming at you. Yeah. And um, if you think of the, um, um, the, the little thing on the piano, what is that called? Metronome. The metronome. You know how like the tempo goes up, it's kind of slow yeah. at first, and then it's like going faster, and then it's like really fast? That's like you, you're ramping your training yeah. up. So start off chill and shorter rides, yeah. that's what Sweet Spot 1 is, mm -hmm. and then you work your way, you're doing a little bit longer rides, and then you're doing a lot longer rides yeah. with Sweet Spot 3, and use that performance manager chart to monitor your CTL okay. and make, it, make sure it's going up. Cool. So that that's a good question, and um, uh, what if you haven't lifted weights? So it, by now, most everyone is probably inside of twenty weeks to go. Yeah, there is no time to lift weights. You, your time is best spent on the bike. If you lift weights now, you're gonna have an insufficient base for the spring and summer. So that's yeah. a do not start lifting weights. And the other question I get is, should I? What I've just finished the weights. Should I keep lifting weights? The yeah. answer is no. No. Now, um, move on, and your time is best spent on the on the bike. Yeah. The gains you make in the training room will be uh, sustained by the the time and the the work you do mm -hmm. on the bike. Um, what was I gonna say to that? Uh, oh, if you're done lifting weights, what I would suggest keep up uh, your bands. You know, yeah. the hydrant and escape from Revo. Do yoga. Yeah. If you're really Stretching, into it, uh, do the mobility. ninos. Yeah, all that. You can keep that up year round. That's yeah. year round stuff as long as it's not impacting your your time on the bike. But no more squats, no more leg presses. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's just gonna um, add fatigue and, and it's gonna um, impact your power output and just yeah. ability to, to really maximize your time on the bike. Right. So so there was that. Um, what is I? I'm reading this question from Rob Burt. So Rob, I would just encourage you to read the uh, product product uh, description um, that will describe the the sweet the resistance training plus sweet spot base. Um, but again, I don't think you should be doing weights it, it now. Everyone that are doing weights, they need to wrap it up so they have time to do base and then have time to, to do intervals. And so if you haven't really hit the weights yet, have you sort of missed the boat on that, would you say? Like oh, yeah. Like coming into road and gravel season? All right. Yeah, that's why you need to start the weights Sorry. October, <laughs> November. Yeah. Well, okay, hold on, hold on. If you're doing dirty Kansas, yeah. you need to ride your bike. You yeah. ain't got no time to get in the weight room. If you are solely focused on steamboat and you haven't done weights and you're thinking of it there's still time because remember you have you got 10 weeks weights 18 weeks of base that's 28 weeks so you just got to work backwards from mm -hmm. steamboat and i think you got an, enough time it's going to be tight yeah but it also depends on your situation if you live in southern california or texas or a warm weather place i'd just say don't do weights but if you live in Michigan and it's icy and you can't ride outside anyway, you might be, but you could probably right. benefit from yeah. weights. Otherwise you're condemned to these trainer rides for the yeah. next eight, eight weeks, which is maybe not be the, the most totally uh, pr productive. Um, okay. So Chris, what, what, Chris Butler asked, what about body weight work lunges? Um, no, 
do your yoga, do your Revo, do your foundations. Don't overthink it. Just do what's in the plan. Yeah. And we, 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 like we thought all of this for you. Everything is specific. You don't have to add stuff to what you're doing. Like literally, like what you guys need to think about is winning in the kitchen, uh, getting enough sleep, you know, doing well at work, taking care of your kids. Don't be worried about what your training is. Just yeah. turn that off. You bought the best, like a really good training plan. So you don't need to think about what you need to add to it. Yeah. it you're already doing exactly is what is right. Yeah, I think the overall long-term consistency is what really makes the difference. You know? Yeah, yeah. So body weight work though, do your yoga glow, um, do your ninos, do your foundations, do your revo, that's it. Um, let me let me just let's uh, move on a little bit um, and and move on to let's see so we went through you and um, let's talk about some rules of thumb um, because I kind of already mentioned if you have six weeks or less you got to get busy you got to do intervals so you know if you're a mountain biker do mountain bike intervals if you're a crit racer do crit intervals time trial time trials so forth. If you have 12 weeks to your event, which a lot of people do, um, it being mid-January and, you know, there's going to be some racing in March and April, even here in Colorado. Yeah. So you're thinking about what should I, what should I do? What I would recommend, six weeks of sweet spot and then six weeks of intervals. Very good 12 weeks. And so what sweet spot you choose really depends on how much you've been riding. If you've been riding a lot, go ahead and hop into Sweet Spot Part 3. Maybe you've been riding medium, hop into Sweet Spot Part 2. If you are coming off the couch, probably need to start with Sweet Spot 1 and just, this is going to hurt a little bit, and then move on to, to intervals. Yeah. So um, that's 12 weeks of really good training. If you have 18 weeks, well, then now you have a little bit more time. Kind of like if you have a goal in May, you have like, 18, 20 weeks. Yeah. I would do 12 weeks of sweet spot, then six weeks of intervals. Okay. Yeah. Um, a one question we got the other day that was a really good one is um, an athlete that was doing the dirty Kanza and then afterwards, this is kind of like, like Asheville Steamboat, like what to do after dirty Kanza. Yeah. Well, the answer is probably just take a week off your bike. Yeah, especially with Take DK. a break, recover, and then you probably, that's what we call a mid-season break. Yeah. And then you want to... Um, probably do a six week gravel or six week hill climbing plan um, in the summer before you move on to your next event. You have to kind of figure out how much time is in between the Dirty Kanza and my next event, for example. And say you got 12 weeks, uh, then you know, then you can, you can probably do a Sweet Spot Part 3. Sweet Spot Part 3 is our most aggressive uh, CTL booster. Okay. So when you're really like, I'm going to just hunker down and build my base, yeah. that's sweet spot part three, but, um, save time to move on to an interval plans. The two go really well together. Is a big area of confusion. This idea of trying to figure out how to stack the plans. Like, like for example, with that, that person, like you do DK and then you have a break. It's like, when do you put the next plan into the calendar? Like how do you decide when to put, X plan into the calendar. I mean, I think it makes sense and it's easy with like the race specific plans, like the crusher, it starts, you know, whatever, six weeks before the crusher. That's right. And so, yeah. but like if you're kind of on your own with these, you know, sweet spot based plans or the interval mm -hmm. plans, like, you know, maybe you build up for, a, a, you know, X, Y, Z race, and then you want to take some time off. Like when do you put the next plan into the calendar and start, start ramping it back up? Or is that built into a lot of the plans? So if you do or doing like if you're trying to build like right now you want to like just you know plan out your entire summer your entire mm -hmm. season mm -hmm. I want to buy three different plans mm -hmm. for like how do you how do you put those into the calendar to make the most sense so that they don't like overlap and get confusing so you just choose your start date on tra okay. and training peaks of when you want to do what plan you know you, you want to begin your next plan the day after you finish your yeah. your previous plan. Like Anne asks, what about cycling trips? And what you can do to do there yeah. is maybe you start your plan the week after you get back from your cycling trip. Maybe you do your training plan while you're on your cycling trip. That's just one of the things that you as your own, own coach, you know, you're going to have to, you know, kind of move some edit things around in, in training peaks. Yeah. And, uh, 
account for that. Like a, we had a question this morning in our private Facebook group, like um, an athlete was asking what to do. He's taking eight days off. And I'm like, oh. well, first of all, you shouldn't, well, there are no you know, non-bike holiday vacations in, in cycling. I was joking with him. <laughs> and, uh, you know, it's real world. That That's things. In an ideal world, you <clears throat> save all those vacations that are aren't bikes after you're a goal event. But when you have to go, you know, you're just going to have to use that as a rest week. And there are rest weeks in the plans. So you can move that rest week to this to the time you can't yeah. ride. Mm -hmm. And then you just have to edit the, the periodization okay. around a little bit. And um, <clears throat> for you, like, did that answer your question? Like how you start your plans the day after you finish your Yeah, cycle? well it's just like, cause it's, I think it, you know, like just setting up the calendar so that it mm -hmm. makes the most sense specifically for your events. Because I think, you know, it could, I could just see it being a little bit overwhelming to be like, mm -hmm. I have these three plans in the, you know, that yeah. I purchased. How do I put them in to make oh, the most yeah. sense so that you can like periodize it within? Mm -hmm. I mean, and that's just, I think, you know, there's a lot of factors and variables there and in individual permutations, like you said. Yeah, what I would encourage everyone to do, you included, is put those plans in training peaks and then just start scrolling from <clears throat> from now through through August. Since like you'll see when you have your plans when yeah. you're actually doing um, formal training, and then you may see where there's like a a week gap in yeah. there where you don't have anything. And that's going to be okay. Like, you know, when you do a dirty Kansas, you have a week off of nothing. Then you may need a week of just riding just to, you know, get your mojo back. Yeah. And, um, then you begin, begin your plan. So that's like two weeks where you're not on a plan mm -hmm. and, and there's that. Then if you're peaking for steamboat, our, our, our gravel plans allow for, there's a, like a, the final week of the plan, um, is a is a like a taper week like a mm -hmm. how to, like a rest week yeah. that's intentional because you got to go into those races super fresh. super fresh yeah. and so the last week everyone's like is that it and it's like yeah because you have just done a ton of really hard hard work so there's yeah. a lot of rest but <clears throat> apply the plans and training peaks and then fill you know fill it in and see see where your gaps are yeah and a cool feature of training peaks. This is uh, this is a super pro tip. You can copy and paste those uh, workouts. You can copy and paste a whole week, and then maybe you copy a really good week from a previous plan mm. and fill that in to bridge the gap. I like that after an event or or before an event to fill in the gaps of the maybe say like the three or four plans you yeah, bought. Yeah, okay. And then now you're scrolling through. You're looking at January through April, and you you you're a hundred percent. Yeah. But if you're going on vacation or something, maybe you just leave that that week open and on purpose and you're just going to do the best you can. Yeah. Like I have some athletes right now, they have like business trips to India and there's a hotel gym and um, like their, their marching orders per mm -hmm. se is like, all right, let's try to ride three times for 45 minutes a day. Yeah. Does, no intervals. Um, no just, intensity, just ride. Just keep that momentum keep going. Keep the momentum going. Don't, don't freak out. Don't take, you know, five days off. So, uh, so yeah, that's something, something like that. And anything beyond riding is like bonus, but the whole yeah. purpose is they're going to keep the, the momentum going. And so when they come back, we've strategically used that business trip as a regeneration week. Yeah. And then the idea is, is once they get over jet lag and just travel fatigue, will take advantage of that regeneration week and begin the, the next block. And so, um, as you know, for all the training plan athletes, you know, just use that, use those regeneration weeks, those rest weeks to kind of, you, you may have to edit those, those around. Yeah. Yeah. That's a good question. Um, let's take it one that's more. That's a good question there. Okay. Chad Fisher asks, prep for a single event. Can you discuss how to prepare for a period of racing? Yes five-week block where you're racing each weekend. Okay, so we have an in-season plan. So uh, it's called Road Racing In-Season. Um, and what this accounts for is that you're racing for like five weeks in a row. We also have, if you're, th this, uh, this doesn't, maybe not apply to you, but we have a cyclocross in-season. What mm -hmm. that also accounts for is you're racing cyclocross week in, week in, week out. And so Chad, I would encourage it. I think you're a road athlete. Look at our road in season. And so do sweet spot um, 
all the way up to six weeks prior to your first road race, then do road racing intervals or road and crit intervals or crit intervals for the six weeks prior to your, mm. your season. And then once you get into that every five weeks in a row, that's our road in season. And what that plan is, is it's a lot of common sense, but most athletes find it really helps because it's reassuring. Yeah. It's a lot of rest. It's uh, assuming you're racing on Saturday, Sunday, or one day a week. You know, it's Monday, easy. Uh, may, Tuesday may be even easy, but it guaranteed it's got one hard midweek workout, either a group ride or like some Tabatas or mm-hmm. one minuteers on on the Wednesday, and then it's going to have you say you race on Saturday. You're going to have an off day Thursday, and then you do your openers on on Friday, the day before the race. So that's our in-season plan. The goal of that plan is not to build CTL. Um, it's to work on uh, your raw power output and maintain your form. So that that's a really good one. And that kind of applies to collegiate athletes too, I would imagine, right? Yeah, that's how our collegiate racing plan is yeah. built. Um, the first collegiate racing plan is uh, um, a build. Yeah. That's where you're driving up your CTL. But once you get into racing, it's, um, it goes into a race and recover mode. Yeah, because yeah. I mean, like we've kind of been focusing on the gravel stuff just because we kind of we're, we're using me as an example. Um, but because I mean, obviously with the gravel stuff, it's like those are kind of big one day events, usually unless it's like this new mm-hmm. Oregon five day stage race or Rebecca's or something. But yeah, I think it's an interesting that, that kind of adds another dynamic if you're like, OK, I'm going to do a full road season where you know, traditionally it's like racing every single weekend and traveling mm-hmm. to these big stage races and then mm-hmm. recovering. And so that's cool to know that there is a plan for that. I, in speaking to your point about racing the whole season, I always encourage athletes to break their season up and yeah. do, like for gosh sakes, don't race 20 weeks in a row. Unless you're a pro and have, right. you know, all then you have support. to. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and, and, and honestly, when, when, when pros race, when they go get to go home, they don't even train. It's yeah. like their rest block. So yeah. then their racing becomes all their their training. Yeah. Pros, world tour pros, really rarely ever train train uh, like February through the end of the season. Yeah. <clears throat> it's mostly race and recover. You know, maybe they get a block mm. of two or three weeks where they have the opportunity to train, but um, really it's just main <clears throat> maintaining form. And that's like the working man world tour riders. Yeah. Not, not the uh, the frooms and the whatever a la Philippe's that can focus singularly just on like the Tour de France. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but to the to the point, what I was saying is, you know, race for like four or five weekends in a row, mm-hmm. and then take a break. Take a, yeah. what I call a non-competitive weekend um, for cyclocrossers. Split your season up into um, halves or thirds, where you have one or two non-competitive weekends. Use those time frames to recoup. Um, and just get your mojo back. If you're a road racer, believe it or not, if you're doing a bunch of crits and you've driven your CTL up and you're racing and you're recovering to race, overall, if, you, if y'all if you have ever heard that term, I'm detraining while I'm racing, Yeah, it's because your CTL is just going down, down, down. This happens in cyclocross season. Mm. So what you need to do is take a non-competitive weekend or two in a row to bring that CTL back up to train and then you build back up your base. And then if you've ever heard of the expression, I'm training through these races, that's where they're not coming into the races uh, super fresh. They may take like a day off beforehand. They're using those races as training. And that's a really hard way to race. If you really love racing and you're just jamming on it, um, you, you can do that, but you have to watch out and make sure you don't like get burnt out. Yeah, well and that's also, again, coming back to the, you know, the calendar and looking at the ABC races and why it's important to check in with yourself and be like, okay, you know, maybe I'm doing these weekly crits or these training races and stuff and seeing them as training races rather than these big events or it's going to be likely that you're going to get burnt out and kind of mm-hmm. planning in that mid season break as well. Yeah. Yeah. So Dave Guerrero asks, um, if you want to be, you want to have a great cyclocross season, what would the, uh, uh, plans fit together look like uh, super duper easy our 24 week off season cyclocross plan then our six weeks summer uh, sweet spot for crossers then six weeks to cross then you're ready to race then you get into cyclocross intervals then you get into cyclocross in season then you do our six weeks to peak 
for nationals plan just straight through um and i hope that doesn't come off very salesy but the way that those plans are designed that that's how you would do it and and to what i said i want to back up just a bit that doesn't mean you can't mountain bike race yeah you have to use that to fit in with the phase of your training if you're like i'm gonna I want to do well in the Firecracker 50. That's a really popular mountain bike race on July 4th here in Colorado. And and then you so you take like a two week taper. Um, you can make that work if you built up a really good base beforehand. Yeah. But if you do like a bunch of uh, Winter Park series races and let your base fall, then you don't have anything to really uh, draw upon in yeah. in the cyclocross season. So the really good cross racers, they're in the gym February in March, maybe a little bit mm -hmm. into April. They're doing sweet spot base all the way up and through into July. Then they start that six weeks to cyclocross plan. That's where they get into cyclocross specific uh, running and drills and uh, skills, skills, yeah. Yeah. interval work, race starts, um, hill repeats, things like that. And then, then you're ready. So that, that if you go to the cyclocross uh, um, section of our, of our plans, they're, um, they're kind of laid out in sequential order. That's a good question. Um, let's see. Cool. Okay. Um, let's see. So we've talked about if you have six weeks, if you have 12 weeks, if you have 18 weeks. Um, if you have 24 weeks, that's easy. 18 weeks of sweet spot and then save six weeks for a um, race specific interval plan. Um, yeah. If you have 20 weeks and you want to live we lift weights. Um, that's a tough one. Uh, but yeah, yeah, I would just, I would concentrate on sweet spot base. Yeah. And then guess what? Uh, in the off season next year, that's when you want to do your weights. You just want to start it earlier. earlier. Yeah. yeah. Okay. The, the, the athletes that, um, build a proper base are the athletes that go on to have great seasons. You really can't mess it up once you have a, a good base. Um, but so the, what's the latest you should start base? Why you should start base? Uh, oh, that's a good question. Um, okay, so it's mid January now. I mean, you should be doing. You should be starting your base now. Yeah. Right. Here's that's another good point. Is the sooner you start your base, more flexibility you have. The with... more flexibility you have, the higher you can set your goals. A lot yeah. of people, um, you got to work backwards. If you start training twelve weeks before your event, you got to be kind of realistic on your your goals. Um, and if, if you start 24 weeks prior to your goal, you actually have uh, room to say, to set a higher goal than maybe you've set before because you're, you're gonna be training more. The more you train, the faster you'll be. The, so the more base you do, the, the faster you'll be. The one thing I, um, I see with masters athletes that have the same season year in, year out, mm -hmm. they take too much time off, they follow the same training pattern year after year. Yeah. And then they wonder why they never get any better. Because when you take that time off, um, anything more than two weeks, I think, is is too much. You spend the equivalent amount of time just getting back to where you were. Yeah. So if you take three months off and then you do three months of training, you only just now got back to where you yeah. were. So, um, and, yeah. And should you start that base should you map it out from your a race or from your first race of the season yeah good question if your first a race of the season is a b race map it out from your a race okay that was what we used as your example to okay. Asheville. Okay. because um remember when i said um training is all about timing yeah the timing of when you stop your base and switch over to intervals i call that switching from base to race mm. it's all about timing yeah. If you switch over too soon and just do too much intervals, I think you'll get a little crispy in the head, maybe risk. Have you heard of that expression, peaking too early? Yeah. That's when you peak too early. It's all about timing yeah. that three week of three weeks of like being on form to fall mm. in and around your, your A event. So if you stop doing base and start um, doing a bunch of intervals, and I see this with, you've heard, we've talked about the group ride hero. Yeah. Yeah. We got a lot of those here in Boulder. We have some. I <laughs> I, I did this. Oh my God! I did this uh, New Year's ride. Ben's Bisco. Bis, oh Bisco yeah, how was that? I, I heard never it was suffered as great as I have before. And um, I mean, granted, I was coming off of a week of offness, but yeah, yeah, yeah. I got dropped 
once. And if it weren't for uh, a friend of mine that pushed me back on, <laughs> I would have gotten dropped 30 miles from Boulder. Oh my God. And had to ride back on. Oh. So he pushed me back on. Thank you, Jeff. And um, I got, it, it was like we were going over these rollers, but there were guys, there was about 10 guys on the front just uh, hitting it the whole time for no reason other than to show everyone how strong they were. Yeah. And we averaged, um, we did, we almost did a century in four hours and 15 minutes. We were over, like close to 25 miles an hour. It was like motor pacing out there. In January. In January. Yeah, it's just like a yeah. classic, classic boulder. I'm gonna call out a couple of multi-sport athletes. They were on the front um, doing it. Yeah. <laughs> I, go. I mean, it's every single group ride I yeah. do here. I'm like, I, and that's why I don't really do a lot of them here because it's like, yeah, they're scary because there's like a hundred people taking over the roads and, mm -hmm. but yeah, I don't want to rant too much and complain about the group ride scene. I will say that fit in with my phase of training because yeah. that was a huge TSS. Yeah. Big TSS. That big TSS rides fall mm -hmm. in line with uh, building your CTL, yeah. which is what sweet spot training plans are for. So doing big group rides with their high volume or, or good, just don't do two hour group rides that you're hitting it all the time and you need to yeah. take a ton of recovery and you, your CTL flat lines out. Yeah. Cause um, when you do too many of those hard rides and you need to recover more, that's when um, you're gonna uh, um, just need to recover and then you peak too early. Yeah. So, yeah. Any other questions, anyone? Um, we are uh, kind of getting to the end of our time. Um, I'm looking at some of our notes. I covered cyclocrossers. Um, I think... Uh, and I guess, like, another question is, like, you know, what about building in these races like Old Man Winter for us in, in Colorado? Mm -hmm. These, like, super, super early season races that like obviously are kind of during the base yeah. phase like do yeah. you just you kind Those of just weave that in. into to your plan like do you yeah yeah you've heard me say i'm just going to use that um that race as a as a hard group ride yeah i'm just looking at um a two 250 tss ish mm -hmm. and that fits in with my sweet spot build so don't take a rest week beforehand yeah. Um, you know, you just gotta kind of train through those unless you like, you know, that trying you're to yeah. trying to win it. But then you can't try to, if, if, if you make old man winter rally, your a race, you can't make, you know, uh, your stuff in the summer, your a race yeah. either. You, it's like, you, you can only have one or two a races and, uh, at, at the same, at different time frames. you yeah. can have like two a races back to back weekends. But you can't have an A race in February and an A race in May because it, it training, it's peaking and, and all that just doesn't work that way. You need a lot of time in between your two races. A lot of well, times... I mean, that's a good example, though. I mean, it's also an interesting point. It's like, okay, maybe you do want to, like, do one of these early season races, even something as early, a, you know, or not super early, but, like, you know, Belgian Waffle Ride or some of these California races that are pretty early, Spring Stuff, San Dimas, you know, Redlands then you just take a big break and then then maybe you come back later in the season in August, September, October for these later season gravel races. Yeah. There's probably, I mean, yeah. is there a way to kind of combine plans to make that happen? Yeah, yeah, that's when you're gonna have to repeat some sweet spot. Yeah, yeah. Uh, we should get a whiteboard because that can yeah. draw, draw that out in your CTL. But you raise your CTL up, you peak for Redlands, um, do some local racing. CTL is uh, like doing intervals, in-season plan. Yeah. Take a mid-season break. Build your uh, CTL back up. That's when you repeat like sweet spots yeah. two and three. And then then do an interval plan after that. And then you're ready to have your second season peak. And the whole double peak is honestly, that's kind of like the holy grail of amateur racing. Yeah. Um, it, you, you can't have a double peak with um, something in June and something in August. You gotta pick one or the yeah. other. It's too, too close together. You can double peak in March or early April and then end of the season. In between is racing and recover and having yeah. fun, things like that. So when, I, when athletes are picking A races, I'm always like, well, think about the beginning and the end of the season will peak, but in the middle you'll have good form and then we'll, you know, that's when you, you, but the, the sequence of plans that we talked about before your A race, 
would um, you duplicate that before your second okay. A race. Got but it. so it go sweet spot intervals A race, then um, good form mid season break. Yeah. Sweet spot intervals second A race. Got it. Like that. Okay. Um, yeah, and but and, and when you do those second sweet spotters, you'd want to. Um, uh, yeah, basically just repeat your sweet spot plan. And then by you're repeating it, hopefully you'll go back in your post activity comments, look at, um, you know, how you were doing, maybe execute it better. Um, you kind of can handle the training load. Um, maybe you're doing it in the summer when you're not battling the weather or daylight. So yeah. maybe you have time to ride a le even, little more. Maybe instead of doing the intermediate plan, you do the advanced. Mm. Or maybe you work but you can ride longer on the weekend because the weather is beautiful. Yeah. So maybe you do more five-hour rides. You, your ramp rate of your CTL is, um, the slope is is higher. Yeah. And um, so you, you build your CTL quicker because the, the amount of time is uh, condensed. Yeah. And uh, yeah, that would be like, that would be like as you're repeating those And that's where training camps can, can come in or, yeah. you know, stage races, mm -hmm. stuff like that. Yeah, that's right. Stage races. So like if you do a stage race, that's essentially um, phenomenal training. You're getting in intervals. Yeah. Intensity, you're getting a, probably a lot of sweet spot and a lot of volume like aerobic yeah. endurance. Yeah. So, you you know, pay attention to your CTL. Um, we used to, like we used to do for mountain bikers. We used to always go to Big Bear May yeah. second Saturday in May. And so to put the final capper on our form, we do the Gila. Mm. beforehand and it was perfectly timed the gila ended two weeks before big bear yeah so you'd go to the gila climb your brains out sweet spot threshold and then go home essentially rest for two weeks and taper for big bear mm. and it, that was a really good combination for a lot of mountain bikers myself included um way back in the day of the Norva national series when the gila was at the end of april and uh so, but you can organize your sweet spot plans like that. That final week is an overload week. That's where you go super big. That can be your training camp. And then um, um, then you do like, you know, two rest weeks in a row to taper. One rest week to like come into like a, like a B plus race yeah. or, a, or an A race where you don't need to taper too much. But we should, we should do, probably do a whole podcast yeah. on tapering then. Uh, <laughs> we should. Yeah. Because there's... Yeah, there's a research scientist, a sports scientist out there called Inigo Mujica. He like his whole entire career is based on peaking. Yeah. He's published like I don't know if I want to say hundreds, but a lot of uh, uh, science, scholarly articles on uh, peaking yeah. in endurance athletes. So yeah, I think we're, we're now we're rambling. Yeah, I think we're ready to, <laughs> to close it down. I think it, I mean, okay. hopefully that hopefully that didn't make it more confusing for people, but I think it. Definitely oh, yeah. answered some questions. and it, yeah. Let's take this final one for Dirk Smith because it's a, it's a good one. Um, doing the 18-week sweet spot plan. There are nine weeks after I finish this until my first A race. Um, yes, yeah, start the XC interval plans, and then you have two weeks uh, before your last week, before your A race to taper. And then guess what? Life may happen sometime in between now and your A race. And you may have like a week of getting sick, knock on wood, or a blizzard, I'm not sure where you're from, um, or something happens and you just need to, the, the more time you have is wiggle room, yeah. the, the better. But yes, 18 weeks of sweet spot, XC intervals, um, send us your podium pick. It's probably better to have more time on the, on the board than trying to squish it in, right? Correct. So all, like it's probably better to err on the side of giving yourself an extra week or an extra two weeks mm -hmm. with those gaps so then you can like kind of freestyle or you know you know have a little bit of extra time to like kind of fine-tune sharpen the sword that's right to just like do a training race yeah the, do a training race yeah. training race the weekend before just to you don't want to go into a race your a race without having race before yeah. so make sure you do a training race you gotta blow out the cobwebs and uh you know sharp sharpen up that's great training so yeah, allow time time for that. Cool. Yeah, well, before we wrap it up, uh, just remember to use twenty five podcast coupon to get to get a, a plan if you're if you're in the market, especially after everything we've talked about. And then finally, um, next week Q and A podcast. Save your questions, send them in, 
um, and we'll just basically spend the whole hour or 45 minutes or however long it takes to just run through questions and, mm -hmm. and that applies to everything like any anything related to, to cycling and training tips um, just fire away and we'll do our best to answer them yeah yeah everyone good luck with your training thanks a lot for listening in we really appreciate it uh, got a lot of a lot of questions and comments um, from this Facebook live so we're gonna be live every week uh, the plan is to be live uh, 11 p.m. mountain 1 p.m. Eastern every Thursday 11 a.m. Mountain. Yeah, 11 a.m. Sorry. <laughs> I don't want to be standing up that late. <laughs> um, so, yeah, we'll see you here next week. Um, in between, if you're a training plan athlete, let us know if you have any questions in the, in the Facebook group. If you're not a training plan athlete, you get an invitation once you buy the plan. Use that code that Jackson just mentioned. And, uh, yeah, thanks a lot for listening. Tell your friends and teammates and yeah. coaches and people about this and watch us on YouTube as well. Yeah, so uh, for the Q&A episode next week, help at fastcatcoaching.com for your questions. We'll curate them and take the best ones and, and do a whole episode at it. You can tag us on social media. We're on uh, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram. Use hashtag I'm a fast cat, uh, to post your questions. And hope you have a great training week, and we will see you next week. Bye. Peace.